Hey creeps, welcome to the second episode of Famous Monster Fridays. I've got my trusty Jelly Bean here with me, and we found this little ghoul playing outside in the trash, so we brought him in. We brought him in and named him Ock. Say hi, Ock. Hi, Ock. <laughs> and he got some. And he is being a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, today we've got another exciting magazine for you. Are you guys ready? Jelly Bean, hand me that magazine! There was glass in this last Oh my gosh. Is he okay? Yeah. Alright. Okay, well. ghouls, let's get tucked into your crib. Okay. Do you need help, Doc? Mm -hmm. There you go, buddy. Come on. I'll see you, see you little ones later, okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Kids. Anyway, so this week we've got the fit number 58 of Famous Monsters. It was from October of, I think, 1969, I think, yes. Anyway, so let's jump on in. Okay, we've got Karloff on the front page there, along with the Maltese pup, Pip, Pip. Okay, let's jump on in. Beautiful photo of the one and only Bella Lugosi. All right. So, the first thing in the magazine this week is an interview with Basil Rathbone. It talks about just his career and all the movies he was in. Beautiful covers and photos. All right, the next next uh, little article is about Die Monster Die, starring Boris Karloff. There we go. So this was an adaptation film of that adaptation of H.P. Lovecraft story, uh, The Color Out of Space. I think I said that right. Uh, where is it at? We've got, and we've got a couple of like photos. This was from um, the Tower of London. I had read over this earlier, but I am failing you guys miserably. I am sorry, but anywho. Watched this film uh, about a couple of months ago. It's pretty good. It's uh, it's kind of weird. It's like a lot of outside -y ruins, outside space ruin type thing. Then a bunch, just a bunch of beautiful pictures. And in this article, it goes over the plot of the movie. So it's kind of like you've seen the movie without actually seeing the movie. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. Here we go again. Right. Still some more. And then we've got back issues. So if there were any famous monsters you missed in the past couple years, you can order them. Just send in, I think it's like what? Seven, one, there's, okay. So the yearbooks were, um, a dollar twenty, a dollar, a dollar, a dollar, and then just more. The older magazines were like a dollar, but then uh, the new, more recent ones were like seventy cents, which is not bad at all compared to. I did the math, and it uh, eight dollars is what it would compare to nowadays. Eight dollars. All right, we're on to the maddest doctor. This dude. I'm probably gonna mess it up. But uh, please forgive me. It is Lionel Atwell. I, th I think I said that right. If not, again, please forgive me. 
Um, but this dude, he was in over like 70 something movies and it just talks about his career and um, his time. He started off as a, a stage actor and then went on to do film after like uh, this motion picture. The wife of this motion picture producer saw him at a play and was like, oh my gosh, we got to put him on screen. And lo and behold, he, he made it. He made a huge career out of it. Um, it says, it just talks about like the different villains he played throughout the years. He played a uh, police inspector, and I think it was the son of Frankenstein. And as you can see here in this picture, he had uh, his arm ripped off by Boris Karloff and what got beat by it. I mean, that's, that's a pretty terrible fate. Here he is shooting Bella, yeah, Bella Lugosi. A few more of the different things he's been in. And there's a, a beautiful picture of Lon Chaney Jr. as the Wolfman. So he was also in uh, Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman. All right, and this just tells a little bit more about his career. There's a really cool story here on in this, this page. Um, they said that the crew of one of the films he was working on, they, after they stopped shooting, he, uh, he would tell stories. And one of the stories was about a friend of his um, who got hit by a car on the way to visit him, and his three dogs got hit too. Well, after that happened, um, just a, a little bit while, a while after the, the dude got hit, he got a call from this medium, not a large, but a medium, Anyway, that um, she had some spirit come through and to call him, Mr. Atwell, and uh, say that, here's a quote from it. Um, where is that at? Uh, where is that article? I thought I had it. Well, anyway. She, he received this phone call, and it was about uh, the lady said that there were no dogs on the other side. And what he was saying, uh, she thought it was kind of weird, but then he was like, oh, if you knew this guy, then you would understand our humor. And that just stuck with him. He didn't say if, it was, if he thought it was real or not, but it, it was what it was. And uh, it, on this page, it shows a list of all of his movies he did. Starting the first one, Eve's Daughter in 1918, all the way to this, The Lost City of the Jungle, 1946. Alright, so we move on to the comic of this issue, which just happens to be The Mummy. Which, I mean, it's a comic. It's got Karloff. So I guess it just tells the story of the mummy, of the film The Mummy. And then there is a little like telling on Boris Karloff's new vamp, or not Boris Karloff, Bela Lugosi's new vampire movie coming out. And uh, yeah. In Return of the Vampire, it, it was like 25 years after the original Dracula was released and his sidekick was a werewolf and uh, so I guess his sidekick ended up turning on him 
and attacking them because of a woman. I mean, you know, that, that, that things, those things happen. All right, and then it talks about a photo from the previous magazine. You try and figure out what monster it was. And then they've got this, this issue's monster. you got to figure out who he is. And then now we get to the Maltese Bippy. I think I'm saying that right. But anyways, this is my new favorite werewolf. I mean, I love Lon Chaney Jr. as the Wolfman, but this guy right there. He's got style. He's got grace. He's here to enslave the human race. And it's just, it talks about this new film from, um, uh, Dick Martin and his, Don, Dan Rowan, there we go, Dan Rowan and Dick Martin. They're kind of like a, uh, Abbott and Costello, um, comedy group, kind of like, uh, was that... Lewis and Martin, I don't know, Jerry Lee Lewis, yeah, anyway, uh, the monster's victim, okay, goes to talk on about a new film coming out, Frankenstein 1970, I believe, I think this is it. Oh, no, no, no. I was wrong. This is just Frankenstein. I guess it was being re-released. <clears throat> then it's got some more. Hey, fill these out. Send them in and get some stuff. That movie projector there was uh, $29.95, which would be about close to like $200-ish dollars. Which, I mean, if your parents bought that for you, that's excellent. More power to you. You're, you're, you're very lucky. You know, 8mm projector. And then they've got a few, like, books and magazines. Okay, now we're to Frankenstein, Frankenstein 1970. And at this, this time, instead of playing the monster, Karloff was the doctor. At least that's what I got from this. I haven't watched it yet. More than likely, it's a slow burn. But I'm not dissing. Much love to Karloff. You know, do what you got to do. It wasn't for me. Um, there's some more models. You could order the Aurora models. Um, and then they've got uh, some Erie magazine. Then here are some just like famous horror sci-fi novels you could order in to get. Oh, okay. Now this would be any teenage or preteen boy's dream back in the 60s. And that is Vampira. Not only is she sexy, she is deadly. Created by the one and only Uncle Forey. <clears throat> what are, like what does she say on the is? Hey there, welcome to the coolest girl me ghoul on mag on the market. My name's Vampire. I'm the newest thing in comic magazine. And if you take me home with you, you can call me Vampy. She's all seductive. Uh, well, looking over this, this looked a little bit more than PG-13, but I might be wrong. Some more horror mag or they're not magazines, they're more novels, sci-fi novels, like uh, Around the World in 80 Days, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Journey to the Center of the Earth. Just these classic literary novels that you could order in if you didn't have easy access. I'm guessing there weren't Barnes and Nobles just waiting around. All right, and here we are, The Creepy Magazine. I can't remember if it's Cousin Creepy and Uncle Eerie or Uncle Creepy, Cousin Eerie. If you know, leave a comment. <clears throat> oh, 
All right. And last but not least, check these out. These are probably my favorite. They're Erie pinups for sale. You could get a giant six foot poster of Frankenstein to put on your wall for only $2. A full six feet, only $2. You can get one of Steve McQueen, Dracula, Bridget, Bardock, Leonard Nimoy, Spider-Man, Boris Karloff, King Kong. Beautiful. Uh, and then, what are these? Oh, okay, picture books. All right, guys. Famous Monster, number 58. October, 1969. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. I know it's not as good, like, cut and paste and everything. We're working on that. We've had technical issues and a little bit of illness, but we still made it happen. Thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time, creep it real.